Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Q&A question we are going to run right now after last night's call, which was how to survive in a falling market. We have, uh, again, Will Coleman with us from uh, Rand Capital, who is going to help us to answer some of the questions to do with the agency debt. So thank you, Will, for joining us for this, uh, for this Q&A section. Thanks for having me. The first question we have from Nicole is really in regard to a, to a equity HELOC, which is basically a home equity line of credit or any line of credit you can have. A lot of people ask the question about a HELOC or a line of credit if the banks could actually pull them and call them uh, within, within a specific time that you perhaps uh, need it. So on a nutshell, this is really depending on the bank policy. It did not happen to me personally, but I know in some situations that some banks, perhaps smaller banks, could call the facility back and want you to uh, cancel the line of credit. But this is not something that we can answer yes or no, because it's really depending on the lender. And there's always a risk that that will happen. Generally speaking, uh, Darren asked whether uh, we recommend to withdraw the money or some of the money and uh, create a situation that the money is being used. So perhaps that will prevent the lenders from uh, calling the, the line of credit. So again, this is the same, the same answer that uh, we can't predict it. But in reality, if you do withdraw some of the money at least and uh, put it, even if you put it in a deposit and receive a certain return on the money, which um, will basically create an arbitrage, which is a gap between what you're receiving and what you are paying, that will be the only cost for you for, owning, for, for holding that money. So if you do withdraw some of the money, perhaps you will be in a situation that uh, the banks were not gonna call it because you're using it. More often than not, they will, if you're not using the facility, they will see it as, a, as an easy uh, callback, which is what I heard in, in the past. Um, I would like to mention, uh, again, Steve Moore asked a question about credit unions. I do like credit unions a lot because they are, uh, they are not regulated as banks. More often than not, they are more uh, flexible on terms. So I highly recommend uh, considering credit unions if you could contact them to receive some uh, term sheets on refinancing, perhaps their policy with the line of credits and uh, ask them again about uh, amortization timeframes because my local credit union that I work with in my market, they are pretty much uh, the only bank bankers, if you like, that uh, can offer you an off the shelf 25 year amortization. So they're a bit more flexible on terms and I certainly suggest uh, starting a conversation with credit union. They could be a great source of uh, funding. Ivan Bell asked about the recording of this. So yes, of course, we are recording every session. And uh, if you are receiving this video, you, you should be already on the MIH mastermind forward slash free education page, which allows you to sign in and uh, create your account. So basically you will receive those, uh, those videos as they come available and notifications uh, of uh, new sessions that we schedule. Now we're gonna go and uh, ask, uh, ask Will some of the questions in regard to agency debt, in regard to Freddie and Fanny. So the question here, you wanna read the question from uh, Darren Gross, please, Will? Sure, so Darren asks, is forbearance dependent upon tenants paying rent or can you take advantage of it as a defensive strategy? And the answer is it, it, it is dependent upon tenants not paying rent, uh, but tenants have to specifically not be paying rent uh, due to COVID-19. So any tenant that comes to you that's having issues or has been laid off due to the coronavirus, it needs to be documented, uh, get where they worked, get any documentation that their employer provided them. Because when you go to uh, your lender, they're going to want to see as much documentation as possible that you're, uh, you're going through a hardship due to the la lack of collections from COVID-19. If you can't document it and you can't prove it, they won't give you forbearance. So yes, it is dependent upon tenants not paying rent due to COVID-19 in order to qualify for forbearance. Um, and then Ting Ting Chen asks, 
Does the forbearance agreement only apply to multifamily or does it also apply to single family rentals? And so FHFA, which is the Federal Housing Financing Agency, has allowed forbearance on all of their properties for both single family and multifamily. Um, that's the agency that governs Freddie and Fannie. So Freddie and Fannie are in the single family space as well as the multifamily prop space. So any loan that is connected to Freddie and Fannie, whether single or multi, qualifies for the forbearance agreements. However, however there's a huge uh, percentage of single families that don't have these types of loans on them. So if, if you bank with a community bank or whoever your banker is for your single family rentals, just call them. Each bank is going to have a different uh, policy and uh, uh, game plan for tackling this. Um, some banks may offer forbearance, some may go interest only for a short period of time, some may have an even better option. So if you're not, if you don't have a loan with Freddie or Fannie and single or multifamily, just call your banker and see uh, what their plan of action is. Um, and then Mark asks, can you get a HELOC outside of your existing banker or lender? Uh, this is kind of the same answer as, as the first one. Each bank is going to have a different policy on this. So the bank that I used to work at, we would not allow this. We would want to have the first lien and the subordinate lien. Um, but I, there are instances where you can have, say your primary loan is with Wells Fargo, you can get a HELOC with a different bank as long as that secondary bank who's providing the line of credit is okay with being the subordinate debt on the property. Um, it may, it, the more communication you can have with both banks is definitely preferable, but it is possible. So you just check around and call what, uh, what options are, are available. I think that's that's all my questions there. Yes. So I just want to mention, thank you, Will, that um, yeah. it is very, very likely that you might need to approach a, a mortgage broker to get an answer to see what's your option in terms of having a second loan on a property with a different lender. Uh, more often than not, that, that second loan could come from a, perhaps a finance company or not even a, a, a proper community bank or a local lender. So some of the finance companies will be happy to take a second lien, a second uh, uh, mortgage position on, on that loan. So again, shop around, ring up to mortgage broker, ring up, ring up some finance companies to find which, which one could be fit, suitable for that. And uh, that's it. Um, we had a few questions, we answered them, and we're looking forward to catching up with you again. We're gonna have Will coming to do a full session with us um, perhaps next month or just to uh, work out on some uh, on some uh, game plan in terms of the, the topics and things that we'd like to cover and we're looking forward to seeing you stay tuned see you soon make it happen